Uh, Rob Jockman. And uh, so Rob's an old hat around these discussions as well. He comes from the Canadian Wood Council. And in the Canadian Wood Council, they, of course, have opinions on different ways to do building envelopes. And they've had different discussions about tools that make it easier for us to do good building envelopes as well. So Rob's here with us today to present their efforts and some things that they've been working on. Uh, the slides that I'm showing you now are a quick covering of his bio. There's lots more to say than this, but really what we're interested in hearing about today is our wall thermal design calculator. And Rob has a handful of slides ready to go, and we'll switch over to those now. Rob, you ready? Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. So I am talking about the wall thermal design calculator. It's one of our tools that we have designed. Um, we, in addition to that, have other uh, tools that do uh, structural design. And, but we're going to focus here on the wall thermal design calculator. Really, it's an online calculator or catalog even, um, that presents a two or even three page summary of over, it's almost 300 unique walls now. And the main essence is that it calculates the RFACT of value similar to um, what Sal just showed, but it also includes a durability assessment. And you can uh, locate this tool on cwc.ca and uh, you can shortcut there by um, typing in WTD for wall thermal design. The, the, um, once you get there and uh, fill in the information, which I'll, which I'll go through shortly, you'll get a report. The report focuses on uh, wall components and individual R values, uh, assembly R values, and I'll go through this in a little bit more detail. The effective R value shown in the big font on the bottom right, and there's the durability rating there, and you'll see two lines of durability rating colors, and I'll explain that shortly. So you get there by cbc.ca, and it's one of our design tools, so select that. And it's actually the first design tool that we have on, on our web page. And just click here to go to the calculator where that red arrow is. That'll be the first screen that you see. And uh, you'll see the top has some colored buttons. That's a shortcut filter. allows you to quickly get to one of those types of um, filters. So if you are looking, for example, at um, no exterior insulation sheathing, or if you want uh, vinyl cladding or brick cladding, just click one of those buttons and that'll get you there a little bit more quickly. But otherwise, you can go through the uh, different menus and uh, select things such as I've selected here, a cavity fill, I've selected R19 and R22, um, structural sheathing, brick, for example, I've selected. So the available components that you can select in our tool, and keeping in mind, as, as opposed to Sal's tool, this is only dealing with walls. Um, and so that's all we have at this point. Uh, gypsum wallboard is always on the inside. We have a vapor retarder uh, that could be either a six mil poly, a smart vapor retarder, and in some cases, a vapor retarder paint. We have stud choices of two by four, two by six, two by eight space of those spacings you see there from 8 inches to 24 inches on center. The cavity uh, can have R14 bats for 2 by 4 walls and uh, up to R28 bats for 2 by 8 walls. And it also has uh, an option to allow uh, half or 3 quarter or 2 pound foam. Wood sheathing available is 716 OSB or half, half inch plywood. Exterior insulation with uh, wood sheathing, uh, we have foil face polyisocyanurate, expanded uh, polystyrene extruded, and mineral wool. That's the semi-rigid mineral wool. And then weather barrier, we have uh, the standard building paper. We also, in some cases, allow for uh, spun bonded polyolefin and liquid applied um, membranes. And then at this point, we have brick vinyl, um, eaves, and fiber cement and wood uh, siding is days away from being added to our tool. So a quick rundown how to use the thermal calculator. Step one would be just to determine what your minimum wall insulation level is uh, that you want for your building code or your energy rating system. And so if we're focused on net zero homes, let's say, for example, um, you would select something uh, at least as good as Table 2 of the Energy Star for new homes, which happens to be the same as the National Building Code 936. And so we could pick, for example, a Zone 7B or 8 wall, which would require about an R22 effective R value. So step two would be, um, the way I do it is I would uh, go to my effective R value range and just uh, select that and 
it can go in increasing or decreasing order. Step three would be just to filter the must-haves. So in this case, I, I decided I must have 716's OSB or half-inch plywood just for the structural rigidity of it to withstand uh, wind and earthquake loads. It's also a great backing for some, some claddings as well. So that's my must-haves. I also wanted to have brick in this particular case. So there's my R effective range. I'm targeting again uh, R22 roughly. But now I'm going through the options, things I didn't really care too much about. Um, so I have 2 by 6 or 2 by 4 options. 2 by 8 would give even higher values. Can select the cavity fill now. So R22, I'm just giving you the various options and um, of what's available for these these uh, ranges. So we, in this case, we could use 2 by 4 studs with R14, or we could use um, bats, R19 bats, R22 bats, R24 bats, in conjunction with 1 inch XPS, 2 inch XPS, um, 1 inch foil face poly ISO, or uh, unfaced EPS. And then the interior air barrier could be either a polyethylene or smart vapor retarder. So in this case, I'll decide to use this wall that you see circled. It's an R22.25, uses R19 bat, one inch foil face poly ISO and a plastic uh, vapor barrier. You simply click on that uh, long set of numbers and letters, and that gives you the report that I showed you earlier. So if we dig into that report, it gives you the R values. Uh, I've circled the one that's the hardest one to calculate. It's not very difficult, but it's the more time-consuming one. Um, so that's showing, in this case, a 2 by 6 wall uh, with R19 bats at 16 inches on center. And that gives that R19 bat gives an R13.4 effective insulation. Gives an effective R, uh, assembly R values. And Sal talked about these uh, same various, the, the same um, assembly values, the R effective value. The center of cavity, that's useful for Quebec. Nominal, which is useful for Ontario, or especially was useful for Ontario before uh, 2017. It also gives an advanced framing option too, where you benefit a little bit from doing advanced framing. And which gets me to the sidebar of what is advanced framing. Um, there's an excellent brochure uh, that uh, you could download for free from the APA. And uh, it describes all kinds of ways to achieve advanced framing. Um, the NBC 936 talks about it being an uh, ability to reduce thermal bridging. Effectively, what it means is the framing uh, is reduced 4% and the insulation increased 4%. The next step is just checking the durability of the wall. And that way, you can compare different walls that have the same effective R value. So in this case, um, this wall that had the plastic poly on the inside, has a durability rating that actually is not the best. It's a conditional fail. And that's based on uh, computer modeling, field experience, and also physics. And this assessment is um, determined from some pretty um, some excellent um, building scientists in Canada. The description here of high pass, pass, conditional pass, and conditional fail are shown. In this case, uh, the conditional fail was just because it's risky in certain situations and it's very sensitive to details. And you're really targeting a pass or high pass where it's a good, good experience for normal conditions uh, or even better than that, robust and resilient like a high pass. Sal talked about the outboard inboard ratio as well. That's what that second row is. And it's showing uh, what the required art outboard inboard ratio is for those five regions, uh, which is to say that you need enough insulation on the outside, on the far right-hand side of that red line, so that condensation does not occur. Keeping in mind this is applicable for lower perm sheathings. If you have a high perm sheathing like mineral fiber, um, this particular um, uh, clause can be ignored. So that was the inboard outboard ratio, and then it shows in the top right what the outboard inboard ratio is for the specified wall. So as an example of what you can do with that information, we've selected that top one in the circle. But if you select the bottom one, the vapor, uh, smart vapor retarder, you'll see that that brings it right from that orange color to the pass color. That's that top right hand, or the top uh, row. It's a light green shade now. And that's just an example of showing how you can use this tool to pick perhaps a more durable wall than you otherwise would have picked. 
I know this is a net zero type of presentation, so I just wanted to show you what the highest R value was so far, and that's about an R32.75, or if you use advanced framing, an R34 wall. Our project team is uh, shown here. These are representing top experts in building science, um, and some of you would probably know some of those people. But I want to show that because that brings credibility to our tool. We also have a steering team um, that I haven't shown on the slides. They were kind of oversaw this group too, just to make sure this tool was useful for them. So that brings me to the end of my presentation.